What's going on there, Duelist? I'm back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash competitive discussion here. I kind of want to talk a little bit about Orcus because I've seen a lot of people uh, complain about this deck, specifically a lot of the crazy turn ones that this deck can open with. Uh, I've seen anywhere from like a minimum of like four negations to at the very max, I've probably seen maybe like six interruptions, not including extra hand traps you might have in your hand. So uh, this deck can get pretty wild if you let it go, uh, you know, unhindered if you don't have answers to it, its initial board setup. But um, I think a card that I really wanted to highlight in today's video as mostly just as like a basic card of you because I haven't done one in a while is actually Chaos Hunter. This is a card that's uh, kind of been on my radar pretty much since I knew this deck was uh, going to be relevant, at least meta relevant. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Chaos Hunter, it's a relatively old card, but if you guys are unfamiliar with this, print plenty of printings of this card. It's, um, it's a level 7 Dark Fiend monster with 2500 attack, which is extremely relevant. The attack value is pretty important, but essentially when your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can actually discard a card and special summon this card from your hand, and then your opponent cannot banish cards as long as this card's on the field. Um, so it's, it's a continuous effect, which is really important. So it doesn't matter how they special summon, whether they're uh, just special summoning out of hand, out of deck, uh, whether Link Summoning, whatever they do, uh, you can just go Chaos Hunter when they Special Summon, discarding a card, drop this big boy out on the field, and it can handicap them from doing anything that they want to do. And namely, these are going to be the main cards they're going to be banishing. Um, I mean, you can obviously include cards like Crescendo and stuff in there, but um, or, or the Phantom Knights, but these are the main cards that they're going to be banishing, uh, at least for the Orcist engine. Now, obviously, there's other cards, like I said, like I mentioned, there's Crescendo, potentially Fog Blades. Uh, the PKs, like there's so many cards in this deck they can banish. Uh, the Cloak, of course, uh, maybe if they're uh, running uh, DD Crow or their own Called by the Graves. There's so many cards, even like utility cards that this deck handicaps, so many other just engine pieces that, the, the, that this card handicaps. It's really, really important to actually know when to drop this card though, and the reason I'm saying that is um, I've seen a lot of people uh, kind of dismiss this card because they're not really dropping it at the opportune moment uh, during a lot of the sequencing of this uh, of this particular deck. So um, let's just say someone's resolving something like a connector. Let's just take a connector for instance, and let's say they get out their dolphin. Uh, once they get out their dolphin, uh, they may rip a card out of your hand, but if they do, uh, you don't really have to worry about uh, you know this card because it obviously has really high attack, so they're not going to be able to hit this regardless. Um, they may play around this if they're doing dolphin, but let's just say um, the, 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 they don't do dolphin factor. They don't know what you have, or for whatever reason, whether it's connector or not, they end up going into uh, you know one of the, the nightmare monsters, uh, regardless if it's Phoenix or Cerberus, and then they ultimately end up going into Nightmare Mermaid. Now, once they go into Nightmare Mermaid, they're going to discard a card. They're going to get out their nightmare. Now, at this point, you still don't want to do Chaos Hunter at any of these points here because uh, once they special summon all these monsters, they can keep special summoning. So even if you do it on you know any of the monsters that they get out before they get out the mermaid. You don't want to do this because as long as they can get out two monsters and one of them being a nightmare on the field, they can very easily link these away for the Galatea. And then once they have Galatea, they can very easily still just go into Dengirsu, use Dengirsu to pop your Chaos Hunter. And that's not very uh, beneficial to you. And even if you have something like a Valor, Impermanence, whatever else, uh, you can, they can still just potentially run over the Chaos Hunter if you're doing it, if they're going second, and let's say you're going first and you happen to uh, have this card uh, during their turn. So they can still run this card over. It's 2500 is beefy, but basically the only time you really want to do this card is as long as they haven't gone into Galatea yet, um, or Dengirsu at this point, or are not able to go into Dengirsu. So usually what I've been doing, uh, if I want to use this card effectively, if I'm, if I'm trying to get the most bang for my buck, is once they go Nightmare Mermaid and then they go Galatea, uh, at this point they'll usually have, you know, they'll be able to use the Nightmare, uh, you know, the, the, the Orcus Nightmare to send the Harp Horror to the grave, then they'll use the Harp Horror to summon out the Skeleton. Now still at this point you don't want a Chaos Hunter, you want to wait. Yeah, they'll go into Bardiche here at this point. Uh, once they go into Bardiche they'll have extra resources in the form of the PKs. And once they go this guy, you really have to do it on this guy because if they, if you don't do it at any other point, they'll be able to just go Symbol Skeleton, get back to Galtea, and that gives them the free option to go Dengirsu. So you want to basically prevent the Symbol Skeleton from going off. Uh, so what you do is, once they get out their Bardish, you can just go Chaos Hunter, summon this bad boy out, and the Bardish, yeah, you'll be able to dump uh, a PK, and you'll be able to get your, you know, your, your obvious, uh, you're, you're probably going to get Fog Blade most likely because you're going to want to interrupt the Chaos Hunter. But once you dump any of the t any of the PKs, whether it's Cloak or whether it's uh, Boots, it doesn't matter because you're not going to be getting extra value out of these cards to banish them to get another Fog Blade or whatever else. So 
literally they're just stuck with a Bardish and their Bardish only has 2100 attack and they have, yeah, they'll have the Fog Blade, but as long as they're not killing you, as long as they can't go get more monsters out now, obviously if they have Dangers or cards like Instant Fusion and all these other cards, those things are outliers to keep in mind, but Chaos Hunter can definitely stagnate and handicap the entire sequence of this deck because at this point they've gone through everything they need to go through yeah they still technically have a symbol skeleton they can use in grave if they happen to clear the chaos hunter but the point is is they're not killing you and they're not establishing you know three to four potentially more negations and interruptions and at that point as long as you have chaos hunter you can do whatever you want with your turn if you happen to do something that puts lethal on board they'll have to flip their fog blade preemptively um, or you'll kill them and then if they don't like if they don't flip their fog blade on whatever you're killing them that, and they're trying to hold it for, you know, the, the, the Chaos Hunter, which is usually what they want to do, you know, they're, they're going to die, right? And if they if they uh, do it on whatever that, you know, that is going to kill them, let's say you make some other big board, some, you know, starter cards, some enablers, whatever you might have, they still have to deal with the Chaos Hunter and they're not going to be able to out it because at that point now you're going to be able to kill the Bardish on your turn with this or whatever else you make. And then they'll probably, like, this is attached to this most likely because they're going to protect this. You'll be able to kill the Bardish and then your other monsters can deal damage. But then you might be able to either set up your own board, more interruptions, and they still have to face this down. If you have any backer removal, you can try and get rid of the fog blade. So you really only have to deal with the fog blade at that point. So uh, really, this is a really cool. Oh wow, my sleeve just split. That's rip. Rest in pepperinos, boys. Uh, the things I do for the, the the competitive discussions out here. So there's really tons of cards that this card. Uh, actually handicaps in the deck and I think it's super important to be aware of that so again in summary what you really want to know is this card stops so many different interactions with the deck everything from the PKs to all the different Orcus monsters to potentially uh, some other cards that banish such as Called by the Grave such as DD Crow that interact with you which is really important I think this card is going to be a really big mirror match card um, it's basically like a permanent Lancia on legs um, and it's really important to keep in mind that if you're running this card in you know in this deck or any other deck specifically for the mirror match with Orcus if you're playing the dangers, it's really cool because this actually, you know, the part that says you discard a card, you can trigger some of your stuff or set up your own grave. So this card's really, really great. Obviously, it's only a going second card, but being a dark, being a seven, being at high attack, I think this card's going to be extremely relevant during the North American Royal Championship qualifier and potentially a YCS in Knoxville. We'll have to see how that YCS plays out. But um, I just want to show this card to you guys so you guys aren't left in the dark, aren't, you know, you know, aren't aware of this card because it is something that can give you guys a huge advantage in this matchup and really just anything else that potentially banishes. I could even see this card being utilized against the Thunder matchup. Obviously, it's not uh, the best against that because they don't always need to banish, but it can handicap them. Um, if they're doing like their guard dragon stuff, then they'll probably find a way to clear this. Or if they can just use one of their effects, they can probably just put like a Colossus or maybe even a Titan if you're playing pure. Um, so, so there are some situations where this isn't necessarily viable against uh, Thunder Dragons, but if it's like the mismatch version uh, with like the, the Wyver Busters, the, the Black Dragons, all that stuff, you'll definitely get value out of this card. So this card definitely has fantastic utility, a great blanket effect, great attack value, uh, potentially as a 7, I guess theoretically you can, you know, if you're playing something like Draco Sack, wink wink, nudge nudge, with Thanos maybe, you could use Chaos Hunter and Thanos, maybe overlay for that fresh Draco Sack, you know. Wombo Wombo's over here, baby, Wombo Combo. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to highlight Chaos Hunter. If you guys happen to enjoy this card review, let me know if you guys enjoyed it. I'll try and do more of this kind of stuff. I, I've uh, been playing a lot on stream lately. One of the things I do just want to quickly highlight before I sign off here is it's really, really hard to play live on stream and talk. I don't know if you guys, I don't know about you guys, but unless you're someone that constantly talks uh, what you're thinking or is trying to think and talk and like read what an audience is saying, it is really, really difficult. So I have been struggling to play on stream lately and get any high quality gameplay for you guys. And that's totally on me, but it, it's a lot harder than it looks to try and think out your plays and then talk them out as you're, you know, as you're doing them. So um, it doesn't help that there's a chat and I'm constantly getting distracted, but nonetheless, hopefully I can get you guys some more cool, high quality gameplay. Um, or at the very least you guys consider joining my stream. I am trying to go to the North America World Championship Qualifier. I'm not going to ha obviously have anywhere near enough uh, cash or the capability to go to YCS Knoxville, uh, which is the next YCS and it's a couple weeks before um, Pittsburgh. So I'd really go to the, like to go to the North America World Championship Qualifier. And in anticipation for that, one thing I want to let you guys know is please join the streams. Um, even if you guys aren't able to donate, you know, at the very least you guys are joining them, watching them. Uh, you guys can like watch the ads and stuff, you know, smash the like button on my regular videos. But on top of that, I also want to let you guys know that I actually revamped my um, my Patreon page. You guys can check out the link down below along with the merch and all the other stuff. 
for my Patreon, I included a lot more rewards. There's like some cool demo Yu-Gi-Oh packs. You guys can get like some exclusive stuff on there. Uh, you guys can get like deck help, discussions, talking with me, access to my Discord. Um, a du you can duel me. So many du cool different options that I've added. Um, and I'd really hope to see you guys, even if you're not joining, you know, the Patreon long term, at the very least consider joining it. You guys can, uh, if you guys don't want to donate to the stream, you guys can do that, get some cool rewards out of it. And you guys can help me go to nationals. So. Hopefully I'll be able to go. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos from me. Check out the merch. All the links on the you know on the screen and down below. I'll see you guys next time. Time Wizard signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching this card review on Chaos Hunter. And uh, hopefully I'll give you guys more uh, more info. And I hope to see you guys in my coming up streams. See you guys next time.